So we've all been following the Democrats' inter-party drama over Biden's spending plan for America, but in the end, you know, we're going to hear today that they've got some kind of a deal. Look, unfortunately, the media, is, the way they're going to report it is not the, what it is. The whole focus is going to be on the fake top line number, right? The squad wanted $7 trillion. The Democratic budget said $3.5 trillion. But today, the deal, whether it's $1.5 or $1.75 or $2 trillion, it doesn't matter. It's still socialism. It's still build back socialism. The media and the pundits are going to claim that this proves that Biden is this great deal maker, bridging the divide between the big government socialists and the huge government socialists. So it's going to fall on those of us who know the truth and see this plan for what it is to inform you, the American people. This plan is not build back better. As I said, this plan is to build back socialists. Let's be honest about what's going on in our country today. Okay, inflation is raging. Prices on everything are out of control because Democrats, they've already poured $2 trillion this year alone of your money into our economy and they've screwed up the supply chain and now they want to put another $2 trillion or whatever. It's like pouring gasoline on a raging fire, literally, that's what it is. It's actually more than two trillion or whatever number they come up with because all they have to do to get a lower number is they just take these programs and stay okay, instead of five years, it's gonna be a two or three year program because th that's a gimmick. They know that once they get these programs going, it's gonna, Congress, it's gonna be impossible for Congress to ever get the votes to, to pull them back and end them. So the true cost of this is not what they say today. It's gonna be in the trillions of dollars. The, this plan, if it passes, it's not going to fuel inflation, it's going to drive up our debt, but I want everybody to understand something, it's not just about the money. What it really is about is the programs, because the programs codify socialism, it puts socialism into our law. Let me give you an example. It puts the federal government in charge of pre-K and child care in America, okay? Because when you become the biggest payer of it, you control it. That's what the government becomes. And then, once you become the biggest payer and you control it, now you can use it to blackmail churches and religion or religious organizations who run pre-K or child care programs. So, like the House bill already calls for, if, if you teach religion or if you decide we're going to follow the teachings of our faith when we hire people to work at our schools, well, you can't be part of the new federal child care and pre-K system that they're setting up. It's going to gut religious and faith-based pre-K and child care programs. About 400 billion of this apparently is for the IRS. What is that for? It's to hire, I don't know, 87,000 was their original number, IRS enforcers that are going to go through people's bank accounts and businesses to see what you own, what you spend, what you're worth. Actually, as of yesterday, they wanted to create a federal property tax. Okay, a tax not on what you make, but on the property you own and, and what it's worth. What it's worth, what they say it's worth. Now, no matter what tax they come up with, they got to say it's only for the billionaires. But once you set up a new federal tax, once you set up a new federal tax, yeah, it starts with saying it's only on the billionaires, or at least how they define billionaire. But then, when their spending requires more tax increases, they'll just keep going down the income brackets. They'll just keep going down to the multimillionaires, then the millionaires, and the people making more than 450, then the small business owner. They'll just keep going down until they get enough money. The other thing it does, for example, is it turns the child tax credit into a welfare program. Okay? The child tax credit is a way to help working parents by keeping more of the money they earn. Not only do I support that, I helped expand it in 2017 and I want to continue to expand that. This is not a child tax credit. This is what they call a child tax credit because it's popular, but what it really is, is a $300 a month per child check from the government and it doesn't matter whether you have a paycheck or not, you get the $300 a month. People say, look, that they missed the days when both parties worked together. Well, welfare reform in the 1990s was one of Congress's last true bipartisan success story. And this plan basically destroys the last great bipartisan success story. It completely walks away from welfare reform and it turns something popular and good, like the child tax credit, into a welfare program. Another thing to look at is at a time of rising fuel prices, by the way, including propane, which is about to skyrocket, okay? This plan puts a tax on American natural gas. We are blessed as a country to have access to natural gas. It's one of the things we lead the world in. And what they want to do now is put a new tax on it. And what that will do, not only will it decapitate and hurt our economy, it's going to increase prices on everyone. It's going to destroy at least 90,000 jobs. They also create a $100 billion slush fund. Why? So that every leftist donor in America who started some green energy business can now go feed off of your money at the trough. Another thing that I really care a lot about, it turns Medicare into a slush fund too. 
It uses it as a piggy bank, okay, by promising to pay for more things. We're going to provide more services. What they don't admit, but well, some Democrats actually admit, and Biden said he admits but doesn't really care too much about it, is that it, all it does is accelerate the day that Medicare goes bankrupt. It already spends more money than it takes in. Instead of strengthening Medicare, all they're saying is we're already borrowing money for Medicare, now we'll have to borrow even more. And it just accelerates the day of its bankruptcy without uh, any accountability for what that means. In the middle of a historic border crisis and an illegal immigration surge, we have hundreds of thousands of people en route to the United States at different stages. Okay? In the middle of all that, they want to give amnesty to millions of people who already entered this country illegally. Every time this country has done any sort of immigration law changes by executive order or by law, all it does is increase illegal immigration because people misinterpret it. And they think, well, there's a new law, now I can come. We already have a crisis at the border, and instead of spending money on enforcing the law, they're actually inviting more people to come illegally. You know what's interesting? Joe Biden didn't run or campaign on the agenda that he's now pushing. All these crazy ideas, he didn't campaign on this stuff. And you know why? Because the majority of Americans think this is complete and utter lunacy. This is crazy. But this is the agenda of the leftist base that now controls the Democratic Party. The agenda of the radicals who raise their money and knock on their doors. You want to know how they raise all that money every quarter? It's for these crazies. And, and they're the ones that control the party. And, and the people who, these are the people who think America is a terrible country, that America is a country with a shameful history, a racist and unjust system, and that this is what, and all these ideas is what they've long waited for. This is what they've always wanted, for the opportunity to ram through their deranged left-wing socialist agenda. They don't care if they lose the majority. They want to ram it through now because they don't think we'll ever have the votes to get rid of it once it's in place. Guys, look, bottom line is this. This is not a plan to fix America. This is a plan to demolish it and to rebuild it into the socialist utopia that they've fantasized about for all those years at the faculty lounges of our universities and, and in all these other crazy places. This is whole thing. It's not a divide between liberals and conservatives. This is not a divide between Republicans or Democrats. You know what this is a divide between? Normal and crazy. Between common sense and utter lunacy. That's what the divide is. If this plan becomes the law, the damage that it's going to do to our country, it, it's hard to describe, impossible to exaggerate, and painful, painful to think about. Never, never in our lifetimes has our economy, our culture, our values, our way of life faced such a grave risk from people in our own government. And if we don't defeat this, the days of trauma and chaos that lie ahead are real.